Well, good morning, sisters and brothers. It is uh, Saturday, April the 4th. Welcome to our morning session of the 10 and 7 Society. It's good to have everybody with us this morning as we go into our uh, time together this morning. We're going to be looking at um, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. It's actually also the lectionary reading for this Sunday uh, that we'll read during worship. So you get kind of a preview as to what I'll be reading tomorrow uh, in Sunday service. Uh, always glad to have everybody along with us. Uh, if you missed any of the ones we've done so far this week, they'll be saved here on the Facebook page as well as on our YouTube channel. Um, so go back and watch any of the ones from this week. And if you want to catch up on our Gospel of Luke study, that was 24 separate sessions, anyway from 25 to 30 minutes apiece. Um, I think it was a good time for everybody. I, know I learned a lot out of it. Hopefully it was a blessing to everybody else. Uh, so go check that out as well uh, on both places, here on Facebook and also on uh, YouTube. With that, by way of introduction, I want to invite you to join me as we go to the Lord this morning in prayer together. Let us pray. O Lord and maker of all things, whose creative power made the first ray of light and who looked on the world's first morning and saw that it was good, I praise you for this light that now streams through my windows to waken me to the life of another day. I praise you for the life that stirs within me. I praise you for the bright and beautiful world around me. I praise you for the earth and sky and sea, for the hurrying clouds and singing birds. I praise you for the work that you have given me to do, for all you have given me to fill my hours of leisure. I praise you for my friends. I praise you for music and books and good company and all harmless and delightful pleasures. O Lord, you yourself are everlasting mercy. Give me a tender heart today toward all those who in this morning light are less joyful than I am. Those in whom the pulse of life grows weak. Those who are unable to get out of bed to enjoy the sunshine. The blind who are shut off from the light of day. The overworked who have no joy of leisure. The unemployed who have no joy of labor. The bereaved whose hearts and homes are desolate. Have mercy on them all. O oh, light that never fades, as the light of day now streams through these windows and floods this room, so let me open to you the windows of my heart, that all my life may be filled with the radiance of your presence. Do not let any corner of my being be left in darkness, but illuminate every part of me by the light of your face. Do not leave anything within me that could darken the brightness of the day. But the Spirit of Jesus, whose life was the life of all people, rule within my heart until evening. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, so again, our reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. This is uh, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Hear now these words as I read them from the Apostle Paul. It says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness and being found in human form he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Interesting there as we uh, make our way towards Holy Week this week, uh, that we have these words from the Apostle Paul. And I think that every one of us has heard these words, I think maybe it will take up uh, or hopefully it will take up special importance this Holy Week coming uh, you know, on the heels of, of our current situation with the, the quarantine, the shelter-in-place orders, whatever you want to call it, that I do feel like day by day um, it's allowed us to maybe be a little more in touch with our uh, spirituality. Um, I know the, the Charlotte's brother, Sai, sent her a text, and it said that even though the churches are closed, he finds himself talking to God more and more every day. And isn't that a, a, a wonderful example? or maybe not an example, or maybe just the reality of what it is. 
because maybe with our churches being closed, maybe you have had the opportunity to talk to God a little more every day through this medium, through our 10 and 7 society. Maybe you have found yourself getting into a pattern now to where twice a day you hunger for the word, hunger for prayer, hunger to get together with your brothers and sisters, even if you can't see them, but just knowing that they're present uh, and, and, and around us. So certainly, you know, comforting words here uh, from the Apostle Paul, just highlighting to us again where our ultimate hope is found, you know, into whose hand we should put our life, which we read uh, from the Psalm of David uh, yesterday morning about, uh, you know, taking your life out of the hand of the world and putting it into the hand of our Heavenly Father, knowing that He's going to take care of us. So that takes us now to our devotion for the morning, based upon those six verses from the Apostle Paul. And our friend writes these words. She says, Oh, that we could have the same mind as Jesus. Even though it seems impossible, as Christians we are called to model ourselves after the one who was willing to die on the cross. Because we are mere humans, doing so demands a great deal of us, not the least of which are the traits of obedience and humility. Although most of us won't be forced to die for our beliefs, we are called to live as if we are prepared to sacrifice everything for God. That kind of supplication requires that we let go of selfish intent to focus on humbling ourselves before God, just as D Jesus did on our behalf. It requires that we value modesty over pretension, meekness over recognition. It requires that we trade self-will for God's plan. Jesus' gift of sacrifice is one we can participate in if we are willing. May we strive daily to have the mind and the heart of Christ. Writing from prison in Rome to the Christians in Philippi, Paul points out that Jesus did not misuse or take advantage of his divinity. Jesus did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he manifested it as ultimate obedience to God. In response to that emptying out, that complete and total offering, God exalted Jesus by naming him above all others. From that day on, when the name Jesus is heard, followers are to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. In so doing with humility and obedience, we give the glory to God where it belongs. May it be so. I love this imagery here of Jesus emptying himself out. Right? and allowing humility to, take, to, to, to be his, his mode, his manner, his posture. And I think for us as Christians, as Christ followers, we, all, we also need to have a emptying out. Right, All of our issues, all of our mistakes, all of our bad choices, all of our addictions, all of our problems, all of our worries, all of our transgressions, all of our sins, we need to empty ourselves of all of that. But remember what we talked about when we studied the Gospel of Luke. That it's one thing to empty ourselves out if we don't come back and fill it in with things that are holy and right, the Holy Spirit. Then seven times the, the evil that was in our hearts is going to return. You know, if all we do is clean it out and make it a nice place for someone to reside, well, the enemy times seven is going to come and reside if we are not intentional about allowing the Holy Spirit to reside in our hearts, in our minds, and in our very souls. But we do so humbly. We don't do so so we can go out in, in, in our communities and, and, and show off. You know, what's the whole Bible phrase about <clears throat> the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing? And not to go out and, and pray in public and make a big scene so that everybody thinks you're righteous and holy. That's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about emptying ourselves and allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us, again, friends, to the point of overflowing. I can't say this enough. You know, don't allow the Holy Spirit into your life and just say, well, I just want a little bit. Right? It's not going to cut it. You want all of it, all to the point of overflowing. And when that overflow hits, then friends, what you understand is that you're going to experience life with more joy, more happiness, more peace, more hope, more love than anything that you have ever known. And you're going to take that joy, peace, hope, and love out into the communities and share it with your fellow man. It's not going to be a matter of a have to. It's going to be a matter of want to, right? Being in service to your, your brothers and sisters is something that you, that you want to do as you feel the Holy Spirit fill your life, as that grace and mercy pours into you, it's just natural that's going to pour out to your brothers and sisters. So I think it's a wonderful uh, little devotion here that, that we read this morning. 
Um, I like the part where it says that when the name of Jesus is heard, followers are to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, which does kind of beg the question, who is Jesus to you? Remember that part in Scripture when when uh, the, the disciples, or, or I should say, Jesus asks the disciples, who do the people say that I am? And they'll say, well, some say you're John the Baptist, you know, come back to life. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're a prophet. And then Jesus asks a very poignant question. Well, who do you say I am? Well, friends, that's our question for us this morning as we gather. Who do you say Jesus is? Or in other words, who is Jesus to you? Is he just a prophet? Is he just a historical figure? Right? Or is he the Lord of every aspect of your life? Is he your Savior? Is he your all in all? Is he the one that you have a loving relationship with? Now, the answer to that is yes. And if the answer to that is no, or maybe you're not yet, why not start today? To repent of your sins, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and start walking that walk towards paradise. John Wesley famously says that we are moving onward towards perfection, meaning what? It's a journey. Step by step, one foot in front of the other. Day by day, we try our best. We'll fail some days, we'll be successful some days. But all in all, you wake up every morning refreshed and renewed to go out and live a life that, that God wants you to live. And it's not easy. Jesus told us in the Gospel of Luke study that it's not going to be easy. But it's certainly going to be worth it. right? And any burdens that come with carrying that cross, Jesus tells us what? Bring your burdens to me. Because he says his yoke is light. And he's there for us. All right, my friends, we'll close up this morning. Again, if you want to go back and reread our, uh, our text for this morning, it was Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. So as we close this morning, uh, let us gather again in prayer. Lord Jesus, help me see humility as an honor, not a sacrifice. As I strive to have a mind and a heart like that, of my Savior. Allow me to understand that obedience does not limit, but instead deepens my relationship with you. Watch over me as I go about this day, filling me with the power of the Holy Spirit to be a disciple that makes disciples. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, we'll be back here seven o'clock tonight. We'll go through another gospel reading. Uh, may talk a little bit about worship tomorrow, what it's going to look like, the drive-in worship. We've got that just about set, I think. Give you some directions and some things maybe to pass along to, you, to your neighbors. Uh, until then, have a great Saturday. Talk to you soon.